Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode eight of my Luminar 2018 tutorial series. Hope you're having fun watching these and hopefully learning something. I'm certainly having fun recording them. Um, this episode is all about controlling the light and that's something that it's a big deal to me uh, because I shoot travel photographs and you never can tell what kind of light you're gonna get. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about taking travel photographs and this is a photo of my hometown in Austin, Texas. Um, but nonetheless, um, I'm always out, you know, we're all, all of us, we're out capturing the light, chasing the light, and to me, when you're back in Luminar, you're trying to manage or control the light to achieve the look that you're trying to achieve in your photos. So I started looking around in Luminar, and I came up with 12 different filters, like 12, right? Um, so a dozen filters that you could use to adjust the light. So I'm gonna go get every single one of those, stick it on this photo, and we're gonna talk about which ones um, I use and why and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Let me uh, see if I can find all these while I'm also talking to you. So bear with me a second while I turn my attention this way. Uh, let's see, we got a lot of them now. Uh, boom, 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 and boom. That should be 12. So if you ever have a ton of filters here, I don't know if you knew this, but you can go to filters and single view mode, and look at that, they're all collapsed. So let's count them, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, got them all. So here's the deal. I'm just gonna go through these and talk about which ones I like and why, all right? So I'm gonna start with develop. The reason I included develop, it's kind of, uh, I don't know if you saw my last episode, uh, just episode seven. It's all about the raw develop filter, also known as develop if you don't have a raw file. And I don't, as you can see, this is a JPEG. Um, but uh, develop is pretty much to me like the starting point, especially if you have a raw file. Uh, it's your starting, it's your base layer for lack of a better word. Um, and um, it includes a lot of these uh, things, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, exposure, contrast. Um, but the truth is I don't really do that stuff in there. Um, it's because I prefer to do it elsewhere. Um, and so it's an incredibly powerful filter and absolutely one that's very important. Um, lens correction and transform are massively powerful and you got to have that stuff. If you had a whole bunch of crooked stuff and, you know, this reflection over here is a little bit crooked, but I'm not going to mess with that. That's what, not what this video is about. So what I'm saying is develop is incredibly important and you should, well, should's kind of a judgment word. It's important. I think, in a lot of photographs to be able to know and understand how to use the develop filter. But for managing the light, I don't really do that. So that's why I'm going to delete it, all right? Accent AI, absolutely. I use it on every uh, photo just about. It's the magic, uh, it's the easy button, right? So it's easy to go too far, uh, but it's also easy to get great results with just a, you know, a mi minute slide. So I'm at 28 and I got a massively uh, differently lit photo. And frankly, there seems to be, uh, obviously it's artificial intelligence, so it has some intelligence about it, but it seems to have a lot. Um, so I think it works really well. That's why I keep that one handy. Tone, I love tone. It might be my favorite filter because it has all this stuff in it, right? So I would come in here and I would adjust the contrast. Smart tone is kind of like an accent AI. It'll intelligently, um, lift the shadows if you're going to the right to brighten the photo without lifting the bright parts, right? So the, the bright stuff won't get brighter, but the dark stuff will. And if you're going the other way, the dark stuff won't get too dark, but the bright stuff will get darker. Hope that doesn't sound too confusing. Um, it's a great complement to contrast because if you look at contrast when you're at zero and then you drag the contrast up, it starts getting darker. And so you can overcome that darkness by using a smart tone. I love those two together. It's one of the reasons I love the tone filter. Highlight, shadows, whites, and black. So let me tell you, here's highlights and shadows, right? Well, highlights and shadows are here in tone. So guess what? I'm gonna delete highlights and shadows because I don't ever use it. Literally, never have used it. Okay, um, whites and blacks, right? There's a slider for whites and blacks, and guess what tone has? A slider for whites and blacks. So I'm gonna go back over here, and I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so polarizing, I just got rid of a couple more, right? Just to make it easy. Polarizing filter, right? Helps increase the intensity of the blues. It's really good for skies and water. Uh, I mean, look at that. I haven't even done anything to the photo. All I'm doing is messing with the light. I've not touched anything that said saturation or color. And I mean, look at it. So um, here's the before and after. There's the before. 
and the after. And so that's a really important thing, I think, to pay attention to is when you're managing the light, and especially if you bump up the contrast, like I did in tone, um, that's gonna impact color. So just keep that in mind. Curves. Curves is hugely powerful. Um, and, and I think it's important to learn. Uh, a lot of people drop an S curve like that into a photo. And uh, I've done a couple of video, and I'm, I'm seeing some fragmented, you know, sort of pixelation here. It's because I have a small JPEG to make it kind of snappy for video. Um, but the curves tool is really powerful, and I think um, well worth getting your hands around. Um, but I don't really use it a whole lot for controlling the light. You can, I mean, you can do these kind of things, right? So you can do all kinds of stuff with curves. And if you haven't seen it, go go back a ways in my channel. I've got a couple of videos about curves. Um, so I use it more so for the color piece, right? So you can come over here and do kind of interesting color things um, if you want to, right? And so, um, you know, anyway, I'm not gonna use curves uh, for light control. So let's go ahead and delete that. You can also just say delete here instead of drop down. Dodge and burn, brand new, very powerful. Just click on start painting. And then if you wanna lighten or darken, let's say I wanna darken. And let's say I wanna go, you know, I don't know, 25% or something. I can just come over here and paint that in. So it's kind of like adding selective contrast to the trees right there in that building. And maybe you'll add a little bit to that shadow as well, just to give it a little bit more pop. Um, you know, maybe you do it all under the bridge as well. Uh, let me hit done and show you what we did. There's before and there's after. Fairly dramatic difference, a tiny bit of work. Um, that's why I like Dodge and Burn. It's flexible. It gives you the ability to just go into minute parts of the photo and do custom stuff, which I'm a fan of. So that's why I love it. Um, by the way, brightness and contrast. If you look here, contrast you've already got. Brightness is basically exposure, right? So um, I don't use brightness and contrast either, so I'm just going to say delete. That leads me to the exposure slider. Whoops, let me open it. It's a slider that says exposure, right? Um, very uh, straightforward, right? You drag it to the right, your photo gets brighter, and vice versa. Um, however, you've got it also in tone, right? Exposure's right there. So that's another reason why I don't use the exposure slider. So I'm just gonna delete that. Um, top and bottom light, that leaves me with two. Top and bottom lighting and adjustable gradient. Let me show you something. Top and bottom lighting, it'll increase the top light or the bottom light, right? The name's obviously self-explanatory. And you can set the orientation. You can tilt it if you want, rotate it. You can expand or collapse the, the gradient zone between the top and bottom. All very cool stuff. However, all it does is increase the exposure value in the top or the bottom. Well, guess what you got? An adjustable gradient. You've got top and bottom separated. You can do exposure. Um, oops, hang on. Top and bottom lighting. I didn't reset orientation, so that's why that stayed there. Um, an adjustable gradient, you have exposure for top and you have exposure for bottom, but you also, for each one, have contrast, vibrance, and warmth, right? Contrast, vibrance, and warmth. So same thing, you can set orientation, move it around, uh, rotate it if you need to, uh, expand or collapse your, your zone of a gradient here, and go to town. So you don't need top and bottom because you've got that in adjustable gradient plus more. And so for me, that's a, a throwaway, for lack of a better word. I mean, it's cool to have these filters. Whoops, I hit reset, uh, delete. Um, but I would much rather just have fewer filters and do more in each filter. So that's why I like these five. These are kind of my five go-to for managing the light. So I might wanna add contrast in the top, make it a little bit more vibrant and a little warmer, right? On the, whoops, uh, well, apparently, Change the exposure, let me fix that. On the bottom, maybe I wanna darken it a little bit, bump up some contrast, give it a little more vibrant. I'm just kind of making it up. I didn't have a plan for the photo, but I can do all that right there in adjustable gradient. So there, there we go, five filters. Adjustable gradient actually does some color stuff because it's got this vividness and warmth, but I think of it as a light control uh, adjustment because of the exposure and contrast, being able to isolate that between top and bottom. So before and after. Again, not a plan to edit. I just want to illustrate the power of these filters and why even though there's 12, there's literally a dozen filters that could impact the light. And there's probably more. Um, these are the 12 that I saw, um, but you may find more. Um, but uh, I don't think you need all 12. Why complicate things 
uh, when you could simplify things, right? Fewer tools that are better. So tone, I think, and uh, adjustable gradient. If I had to pick two, those would be the two, and I'd simplify even further. So that's one photo. Let me show you another example. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Um, and so this one, a completely different sort of lighting. Um, this one being a cityscape at uh, late in blue hour, you know, kind of twilight. Um, I'm just going to go get my favorite filters. So I'm going to get Accent AI. I'm going to get Tone. I'm going to get Polarizer. I'm going to get, what else am I going to get? I'm going to get Adjustable Gradient. Got to have that. And uh, let's see, Dodge and Burn, right? So I may not use them all on um, this photo. And again, I'm kind of riffing here, but let me show you how quickly you can have an impact on the light values in a photo using some of these filters. And so um, it gives you a lot of power with a, uh, a few tools. And so that's why I like it so much. I think it's just uh, incredible, to be honest. So uh, let me set the orientation here. Um, and that's the thing I recommend doing because I was making adjustments and they weren't looking just right because I didn't set the adjustment, uh, the, uh, the, the line of division, the orientation between the top and the bottom. Uh, top, let me see, I'm going to go a little bit darker in the sky. Bottom, I'm going to go a little bit brighter. And, you know, there we go. I'm not even going to do dodge and burn. Let me see what I did. There's the before, there's the after. Now, it probably needs some work. Uh, the point is not, hey, look at my finished photo. The point is... I used four out of these five filters, so I didn't use dodge and burn, so let me go ahead and uh, remove that. So I used four filters, and I made a massive difference in the light in, I don't know, was that 15 or 20 seconds? I mean, again, I was going fast, and, it, and it, it's also not about speed. I'm not trying to tell you to hurry. Um, uh, to me, it's about how powerful are these tools, and how simple is it to really get your hands around them. So, you know, you could come in here and say, well, I'm a little bit more shadow or a little less shadow, right? too much highlights, or maybe I need some more high, whatever. So you can make any kind of adjustments, take your time, don't hurry. But my point is these four or five filters uh, that I love, I think are really valuable. And that's part of the reason I like Luminar so much is because you can get to the same result different ways. And so you don't have to like these filters. I'm not saying, hey, Jim's favorite filters are these, so you should love them too. It doesn't matter. You pick what you like, that's what matters, and do what you want. But my point is, with Luminar, it's so powerful and so flexible, you can get to the same thing coming at it different ways. And so if you love the exposure slider because you use Lightroom, and that's what you're used to having, and you don't have a uh, smart tone or whatever, and if you like highlights and shadow, whatever, you know, use those filters individually. Uh, you could set up a workspace that mirrors your Lightroom uh, set up if you're coming from Lightroom. You know, same for other products. Um, anyway, that, I guess I'm just kind of rambling at this point. So um, I just wanted to share how to control the light because there's a lot of ways to do it. I've counted 12 offhand. And, um, you know, I think I've got a pretty nice looking image here. And I didn't even do anything. I didn't affect the colors. I just made a little bit of contrast adjustment, a little bit of vibrance and warmth here in the adjustable gradient. And the rest is just managing the light. And so that's why I start with light before I go on to details and colors. And this, I have a video a while back about my workspaces, and they're about light, detail, and color. So as you can guess, the next two videos, I'm going to delve into details um, and what some of the differences are between those filters and then colors, how I enhance colors, what filters I use, and why and how and all that. So that's the uh, next couple of videos that are coming as soon as I get to them. But this was about controlling the light. I hope that it was helpful. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Feel free to like, share with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, and I guess that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and adios.